So I just got a parcel and I'm very curious. <laughs> yes, I live in a strange place. Don't mind the hair. And I'm curious. And my colorful hallway upstairs. I ordered quite a lot, so I've got no idea what it is. But let's have a look what it is. Because I think. server motor, my new team radio, I love getting parcels, servo motors, <laughs> yes, 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 and what are you doing? Are you doing? You guys okay? You guys have been good? Design build. Yes, that's what we do. That's what this house is about. So what I ordered is, I won't go into details, I ordered a whole bunch of um, motors to test because, drum roll, drum, drum, drum roll, is I think I can have or the lacing in my shoes. Um, I checked out the torque of these things. They're kind of um, they're kind of powerful enough. So basically, the cable tension that I have on my shoes, uh, 15 kilo strength wire, fishing wire, I should say, to um, 30 and 15 was um, adequate. Um, I do a lot of fun stuff with electronics, and it just occurred to me the servo that I had at home. Um, has quite a bit of um, a bit of a punch to it actually and it's actually got pretty high torque now servos only do 180 degree movement so you can see there's a little motor in here this is a controller board and they do 180 degrees movement and I don't know if you can see there's this little plastic what am I going to call that like a stopper so it goes and hits that wall there and can do 180 and you can do some pretty accurate turns with it but you can modify the board to make the servo motor do a 360 degree turn or a continuous spin, which is ideal. And this has super high torque um, because of the gear ratios. But the problem with this one that I have at home is plastic cogs. I know a bowler system on your shoes also use plastic cogs and that, but to be honest, I don't trust. You have to think um, Nike shoes that are, that are auto lacing, shoes of this is what I try to explain to people. Shoes are very, very different for lacing compared to cycling shoes because in a shoe, the only thing is uh, a lacing on a shoe has to do is hold the sole to your foot. That's it. That's, that's all a, sh a normal running, walking shoe has to do. So when you, when, you, when you lift up your foot, the sole goes with you and you place it. Um, and when you run, you, you can do as fast as possible, as fast as you want, and it doesn't really matter. Um, but a cycling shoe, when you pull up, you're actually pulling up the pedal. And depending on the power, there's, there's, it's, a, it's, it's actually a lot of um, weight you're pulling up. So, because of that, um, I don't think a standard Nike auto lacing system would work. I did some Googling, tried to see how they were doing it, and um, yeah, I couldn't find it. And I'm not going to fork out 350 euro to rip, out, rip, rip a pair of those shoes apart. Actually, I actually have a, a pair of auto lacing shoes and, and, um, from Nike. Not, not the normal ones, but I have the, the mags, um, and there's no way I'm going to rip these apart. Um, I'm a huge Back to the Future fan, and so, um, but it's not the okay. It's not those ones. It's the the cheaper ones. Um, those those Nike mags on Back to the Future. I think they retail like twenty seven thousand euro. I got the much 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 cheaper ones. Yeah. So because of the amount of force you pull up, I don't trust the plastic cogs. So while I played around with this servo, it it, it actually I, I I think I I think I can get it. I think I can get this auto lacing. Well, not auto lacing, but uh, electronics lacing because it'd just be ideal. You put your foot in, and I have these buttons here, and it could be embedded into the sole. And you just push one to tighten, one to loosen, and I'm thinking about having two motors inside the shoe to do the lacing at the front and at the back. And if I can do this, then I can have the whole shoe, because my dream, my, my, my dream, my vision with my shoes is to have a seamless, 100% seamless shoe. Now I know I have a very, very good seamless shoe compared to other shoes, but 
still on the inside of the shoe I still have the laces there and I want to get rid of this and also the flap where it comes in I want this not to be there and I won't give all the details just yet how I'm going to do it but it's going to be totally different and the new design will be stiffer because the new design will be lighter um, of the shoe and the sole and that this thing weighs seven grams this thing weighs 11 grams that's a city one a bowl one depending the amount system you have is around 11 grams too but you have to notice uh, realize that it's not just putting this onto it because when you just put this onto sole you actually have to mounting points so you got to add up the, the bolt weight plastic capture that you use to catch this and i'll be back and what I mean by that, the thing that holds the system. So this is a this is a very old design that I did. This is years ago. Um, I just 3D printed this um, with my 3D printer, and and you can see here holds the city system really well. So there's a there's a hole for where the rope comes out, um, and then there's a part where the release of the mechanism goes in here. It's a very tight fit, and it fits in, and you see the the hole there, and that's where the bolt would go to join the city ratchet system onto my shoes ages ago so it actually it, it works this works really good um, no complaints about that so the thing is when you're adding when you're working out the weight of the ratchet system it's a lot more complicated than just to you know just weigh this and that's it no you've got to have a system that holds it um, I'll show you a design I did ages ago from carbon fiber this was mint this was um, I thought really good uh, great um, I I have to admit, I think it's really good carbon fiber work there. And now that that's what I did, where the city system would fit into it. Um, but the problem with that is, as soon as you step on a rock, that would break. You can see um, how light it is, and that's not very good. This is 11 grams. I think this was 9 or 11 grams. I forgot, somewhere around there. Um, I would take the case out, and I'd 3D print my own to make it fit the sole, so I can make this a bit lighter. However, I don't trust the plastic cog system. So what was in this package was servo motor. And the reason why I'm using, I don't want to get into details too much, but you have different types of motors, uh, AC, DC, and blah, blah, blah. And so this is your traditional motor. The problem with this is when there's no power, it still spins. And the thing is, I want the shoe to be able to um, tighten. And when you don't, when you finish tightening, it, it actually holds the tension because that's what you want. I, I cannot have battery power also holding that tension, holding the shoe under tension, place on tension. You have a stepper motor, so this is a stepper motor, and um, uh, I won't go into details how a stepper motor works. It's super complicated, but you can actually really this, these are super precise uh, movements what you can do. They have super high torque. This would be ideal, and you can see um, it has a D shape end and I cannot even bend I cannot even move it so this has this is this was a good option for me to do this was a very good option for me to do the problem with this is step motor I could not get it too light super heavy and you know with my shoes I want them as light as possible always and also the problem with step motors is um, you have you need a controller board which is this big you can get smaller ones you can get smaller controller boards and then the, the programming board. Okay, I don't have any small ones here. Um, I did order them um, for the shoes, but at the moment I'll just be using a standard board for testing like this. But the end result of the boards that I ordered are the, I think it's the micro version of this of this board here, which should be the size of this piece. So that'll be a controller board. I can use this thing to control two of these. And this will weigh about, um, I think it was seven grams, uh, the one I ordered, the controller board. So I have to program that to work out that. I have two switches, or four, sorry, four. One from the front, one from the back of the stepper. All the ones I ordered, so this one here from one company. I don't know if you can see it here. It is metal, and all the pieces inside are metal cogs. This would be a lot more stronger than um, the servos that I have at home. Um, stepper motor, way too heavy. Couldn't get a lighter version. It's got, with no power, it, it holds good. Yeah, so I see... Like, I can't even turn it, and when I do force it, what I'm actually doing is, like I can turn the top, sorry, you can't see that, I can turn this top, but the actual cogs are not moving, and what's happening is, I'm just ripping the thread of the plastic piece. This is why I want to stay away from plastic. I can't turn it. It's, it's, um, I'm, I'm super impressed. I'm super impressed on how this is. How this, this is. Um, so this, I hope, replacing this, you know, the same weight. And it'd be so nice to be able to um, have a nice little button you push. Mm -hmm. And just um, 
tighten my shoes instead of having all these laces and worrying about and that. And because the shoes are going in production, the good thing about this uh, coronavirus is I have a lot more time on my hands to catch up on this. So I will be working on that and finishing that. So this is a different company I bought right, of the servos. Um, this one I can turn, so obviously this is not ideal. This one I cannot, this has, like, it's really, so, this is why, and, and they cost nothing, actually, I don't even know what they cost. So you see here, this one I can turn, so, the only thing is, like I said, uh, server can only move 180 degrees on um, each direction, but I can um, open this up and I can modify it to do a full 360 degree turn, and I'll be able to have full lacing. Um, the only thing is I do have to cut something out in there and um, it's metal so it's going to be a bit more complicated but super excited about this. Also on the website they had um, these motors here so this is like a normal motor if, if the I don't know if you're going to be able to see that but I might have to take a photo because this is super complex um, gearbox in there and this is to just slow the RPM um, down with the lower RPM would be higher torque and higher torque would be tighter laces and also with this system too um, the system is super high torque so um, I'm going to try and work out how to do lacings both with uh, a normal motor and the servo and see which is the lightest one I can use and the smallest you know I ordered a whole a whole bunch of these ones a whole bunch of these motors um, you know, they were, I think they were like five pound each. I got them from the UK, so they were five pound each. Um, and we'll see how good they work. Pretty, they're, 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 you know, it's lighter than a ratchet system. So it'd be pretty cool if I can somehow hide this into the sole. What I have at the moment with my shoes is I have a 3D printed um, hook system, which I'll show a picture now. And for me, the hook system works perfect. It works really good. It is super light at 2.7 grams. It trumps um, a system like this. And the good thing about my shoes is because the shoes are molded to your foot, it fits better and you don't have to over tension the shoe. Compared to a normal shoe that's never really you know, fitted for your shoe, you have to always over tension, over tighten a ratchet point, not to make that part tight, but to make the areas below and higher tight so with a, a non-custom shoe there's going to be some points in the shoe where you do have to tighten it um, a lot more than normal and with my shoes you don't actually have to have them so tight because of this reason um, because it's a snug fit and that's why I can just use um, that little 3d printed hook that I, I'll show again now and the one size is, is um, the one you just tie it up and it's, it's good to go for the whole race and for me it's like I don't need to you know loosen them in the race and tighten the race that is the disadvantage of the system that I have now and the reason why I want to go back to ratchet system is because yes I'm going into production with the shoes and because of that I um, yeah I just uh, I, I want it to be more how do I say it um, uh, flexible easier for, for the, the, the people buying it these would be so easy to control like you know you don't need to control the board and I can run these at 3.7 volts which is the same as the, the, the board so when I test all this I've got to find um, that's the thing you know I, I can I can program this I can control the servos easy I can control the motors easy and I can control it for tightening the laces and easy um, the one thing I don't know how to do never programmed on how to charge a battery which would be easy. So I don't know if I'm going to put a battery where you, you know, you replace it every month. You can buy some pretty small 3.7 volts. I think I have some. I do. You know, you can buy, that's, in my eyes, that's still too big. You know what I mean? This is, this is something I don't want to shoot. That's way too big. Um, I can only... Dobry den. Jo, dobrý, jsem doma. Tak pojďte Co? So, more parcels. Have to pay for it. So, need my card. So, in coronavirus times, cash on delivery, which is pretty cool, but they don't take cash anymore, so you pay by card, which is even better because I never carry cash. And you have to wear a mask when you... When you take your stuff, look at my babies. Are we? 
the crazy. Life coronavirus. Hey, dogs, what's going on? Huh? <laughs> So, parcel number two. <laughs> it is Christmas. So, yes, now you see the guy that killed himself again. He got hanged. Yes, my house is not normal. But, but it's just me. And I love colors. So second parcel. This is a exciting day. I didn't plan to do this video, so I'm sorry if um if everything is so that's what I look like. Cool, okay. Now the problem with the DJI, I, lo I love it, I really do. But the problem with is the screen is so small and the screen is square and you record landscape and you just you just you don't know. You, you don't know what you're recording, you don't know, you know what I mean? Got unbox therapy. So, the last package contained uh, the servo motors and that. Um, this new package that came had different servo motors. Um, and I have to admit, I ordered these ones first. These, you can see um, that are plastic cogs also. Don't know if you can see that, if it's clear. So it's plastic cogs. I know... Um, my original plan was just to use this, try this, see if it works, and if it works, then find out if I can get a metal one. So I ordered the metal ones, and I'm so. But these are much lighter. These are like um, says it on the pack. I don't know if you can read it. Seven grams. But I've got this for another project. It doesn't work. Um, what's inside of this? I have because it's USB cable. I think it's a new board. Um, and in this package also, like I said. I'm trying to do things good for the environment and everything is just full of plastic and it really annoys me. More servos. This is your pretty much your typical standard servo motor. The other ones are very small, massive. So obviously this is definitely would never ever, I would never put something like this in my shoes. Way too big, way too heavy. And actually I'll tell you what servo is actually for. I'm into helicopters as you know. <laughs> So this is a helicopter, um, helicopter, um, this is a, a very serious helicopter. I built this. Here is a servo motor. And what the servo motor does on this one, it controls the pitch of the rear rotor blades. Pitch, you see. And a little insight. If you want to know the rotors spin one direction and because of that the helicopter spins in the opposite direction and the reason for the rear rotor is to um count, how do i say it? counteract that spin yeah and depending um so when you're flying a helicopter and you know my helicopter license <laughs> when you're flying the helicopter your pedals control the pitch so when you when you put your right leg more the, the it'll change the pitch to be um and this is different because some helicopters spin clockwise and other helicopters spin anti-clockwise um so that's how you rotate a helicopter based on the pitch of your rear rotor and the faster you move in a forward direction the the tail um keeps the helicopter straight and then you have to you don't need to play with the pedals to do it. But when you're hovering, you're on your pedals. Um, but when you're hovering, that's when you're really using, um, you're really using the pedals to um, keep the the helicopter not spinning out of control. So, like I said at the start, um, when I was programming, when I normally when I work with this, I use um, okay, this is a mega board, and with the mega board, you have so many inputs. This one has 53 inputs, so you can control um, maybe. 26 servos on one board, which is pretty impressive. Um, so that's a mega board. This is your standard board. And for me, there's no way I'm gonna put this in the shoe to control the motors. So what I did is I ordered some other boards, which I've never programmed with, but <clears throat> what these boards are, they're miniature. They're very tiny, very tiny. They're, they're enough to do the job. So um, I ordered a 
whole different types just to see the size. And just, just, to, just to go back to these boards, these are like little computers. So they have a CPU, RAM, everything. Um, and you, you can just do, you can, yeah, you can just make, you can make anything. You can use anything. But they are big. This is the original company that I always program in and use. This is the smallest board I think they sell. This board here does the exact same thing as this board. So I bought two of them. And this is controlled by a micro USB, so, um, sorry, mini USB. This one is mini USB. So that's how you upload the, um, the code when you compile it. You know, I could fit that. Let me show you him. I do, very old pair. <clears throat> so basically, this inside there, um, so this is one of the smallest ones. So that's the, that's the smallest board in Aldino, um, but then you can buy aftermarket products. This is another company, as you can see, when I compare it to, it's pretty much the same size. <clears throat> There's one called the Pico, this is tiny, um, but it doesn't come out until March the 31st. And I want these well and truly done before then. So the mini one, deck robot, this one is. So. This one's smaller, so I'd be definitely going for this one. So that's the winning one so far. And this is from a totally different company. I won't even try and pronounce that. Made in Italy. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. All my cars are from Italy. Okay, this one is my new winner because it is even smaller. Benefit of this one also, it has a micro USB connector. So it's going to be super easy to upload. So what I did is I just bought two of each board of all the, the super smallest ones you can get. These boards, they cost anything from, um, depending where you buy it, depending how many you buy, but they cost between like two to 10 euro each. So, can set up the displays, I can see. See what I'm looking at? I'm back. I, I, I couldn't help myself. I had to, I had to try directly. Like I, like I said, I, I, you had the servos and with the servos, you got to control it with the board. And um, I thought the servos would be really cool um, because they have high torque. And then I was discussing about the, these motors with, with the metal cogs, reduce the RPM and have high torque. Uh, I'll show you what I just quickly uh, did. So basically, um, this here is a, this is for, um, for the people that, that don't know this stuff. This is a breadboard, this is just for testing. Um, I hooked this up to a very, very tiny, I think it's a 2032 battery. Um, everyone knows in cycling what that is because that's what you put in your SRM heart rate monitor straps. Do I have one here? So it's these ones, yes, it's a 2032, I got the name right. This here is the button that I will use on the shoes, super tiny, better quality. Um, this one here I've just attached to the breadboard because it has um, these pins that go straight in and this is, this is how you test stuff. So this took me 20 seconds, testing environment, and you can see, if you turn, look at that. Oh, easy to my ears. This is super cool. Um, and just to check the torque, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the button and then just make it run um, continuously. Now there's no button, you can see the motor going. And I'm gonna try and hold it somehow without dropping these cables down. And it's, you know, it's as hard as I can hold that it is still spinning, so that is ideal. So the little 2032 battery um, spins this little motor, so directly, in my opinion, I'm not even going to try the servos because with the servos, it's, they're a little bit more complicated. Um, you have to program them. Like I said, you've got to use one of these boards. Yes, I found super tiny ones, but if I can just um, hardwire it and forget about it, um, I could just really just have the battery in these little motors. It'll be interesting to see how long, how many times the 2030 batteries will tighten the shoe and untighten the shoe. So I think what I'll do is um, I will set up a pair of shoes, I will set up the laces on them, and I'll time it how long it takes to tighten the shoe. So let's say it takes 15 seconds. Work out, okay, it takes 15 seconds to tighten the shoe, 15 seconds untighten the shoe, and then I'll just unclip um, this wire here and then I'll just put this wire here 
and like you see there it is just spinning and I'll put it I'm not gonna watch it I'm gonna put it a camera on it and I'll measure it and I'll see how long it takes to reduce the whole battery life of this and then I'll just divide that time by the amount of time it takes to do the laces and that's how many cycles I can get from one 2030 battery I'm not going to test this battery because this battery is an old battery from a heart rate monitor strap. So what I'll do is use one of the new ones and then um, I'll work out how much time it would take to complete a battery. This is so cool. So I thought just to uh, complete this, this video, I quickly ran downstairs into my workshop and what, what, I, what I want to explain was, um, so this is, this is uh, just a prototype shoe I made years ago. This is a super old shoe. Uh, actually, it must be four or five years old actually. And this is what I meant by the, the mount system. So this system here is the city one. And as you can see, I made it from carbon fiber, this, this um, strand here, and it's, it's works really good works perfect and how how it works is um, you basically put the lace of the city through this part and then you put the release agent through that hole works out should be release you like the city, I don't know if you guys remember this old design, you hold it and you pull it and it works like that. So once again, works good. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I went away from the system is like I said, um, if you step on a rock, you will crack the carbon. And I, and I luckily I didn't have this, I was always you know, super worried when I was walking. Um, and, but this was the lightest system I could do before I went to my 3D printed one. Um, and you know these things these things are not they're not super light now my 3d printing one is 2.7 grams I actually don't have they're downstairs but I just I'll just show you the the weights of everything just to just to get an idea so here are the scales um, turn on and this would be interesting to see everything just to get the numbers I hope um, you guys can see that well. So your city system was 8.2 grams. The motor that we just tested was 9.8. So it's one gram heavier. And just the simplicity to be able to put this anywhere in the shoe would be ideal. And just to give you an idea of my shoe. So this is, <clears throat> this is the whole shoe, including the cleats, okay? So that's, and seriously, that's how light these shoes are, that the heaviest point is at the actual cleat point. The weight of the cleats and the bolts, there should be three bolts and the three faces. 32.7. Yeah, so this shoe in particular is 63 grams without the, um, without the cleat. Actually, be interesting to know the weight of these batteries too. So what's the weight of a 2030 battery? Holy dooly, did you survive that video? That was a lot longer than I thought. So uh, it's coronavirus season. Um, if, you're st if, you're st if you're still here listening, um, thank you very much for paying attention. It, 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 um, it actually took me longer to edit than to you to watch it. And this happened uh, today, this afternoon, so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a fun project. Um, and yeah, let me know if you guys think I can pull it off. Um, it definitely won't be happening uh, too soon, but um, it's, it's on the list of uh, things to do. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize for the volume because I didn't use a microphone for normally I record uh, video uh, separately and I didn't use a microphone. I just used a DJI Pocket microphone and it's terrible. It is terrible as you can see when it's close, it's loud when it's far away. I'm going to have to re-edit the video twice and amp up the magnify the, the volume because when I magnify it one time, it's to maximum. I can hardly hear it on my laptop. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but thanks for hanging around, <laughs> and um, yeah, let's uh, let's make a shorter video next time. See you guys.